we can use the R Studio interface to bring some data into R, and I think we'll do that now because I think one of the important things to remember about uh, using R and, and dealing with data, which is part of what this unit is about, after all, is to understand the data structures. So we've got a, a, a single data file in the folder associated with this R project, and we can show you how to set up an R project and whatnot as the unit progresses. But if we click on the data file, and it's just in the form of a, a text file with commas separating each number or um, heading in the four columns, we get a couple of options. We can just view the file and have a quick look at that just to see what the file looks like, and that'll open in our, um, basically our script window at the top left. And we can see that the first row has a whole lot of values separated by commas, comma separated value, and, and those are the column headings. And so in the columns, we've got lots of data. In fact, if we scroll down, we can see we've got 96 rows uh, in the file, uh, and each of those corresponds, in this case, to a particular sample, and they're all separated by commas. Now, that that's not a very useful way to either display or use the data. So what we can do is we load it into R to create what R calls a data object or a data frame. Now, don't worry too much about how that uh, looks. We're going to close that, and I'm going to click on the, the data file again. So a comma separated value file, which you can just create in Excel. And in fact, we can read in Excel worksheets as well. I click on that, and instead of clicking view file, I click import data set. And then it opens up a, a dialog where I can um, preview the data. So what our studio has done is actually recognize the first row as being headings, and that's one of the default parameters we can put in. We can unclick that, but then we get a, a basically unusable data set. Okay, so there's a bunch of data in there. There's a uh, an analysis sample identity, not that useful. Uh, what we will do when we go into the field is divide you up into groups. And this column here just represents the group name, so it basically identifies who collected the sample. And then within each group, each sample has a number. So those two together, the group number and the sample number, uh, uniquely identify each sample. We want to know what it is that we've collected. Um, and so we have soil, and we probably want to fiddle around with some of this because soil's coming up as a character, and I'd actually argue that it's a particular type of data, uh, which is we call a factor. Okay, so it categorizes the data. Now, what we need to know here is a the names of the factors. Well, we know that one of them is soil, and I know some of the other ones as well. I know that we have sediment, and I know that we have street dust. I hope I've got those correct, because R is uncannily case sensitive. Um, so if you get stuff wrong, it just won't work. Okay. Uh, let's see how we went with that. We could probably scroll down. So sediment was corre correct. Did we actually have any street dust? I'm not sure. Okay, we're only previewing the first 50 entries, so we're going to have to take a punt at that. Anyway, um, so there's some other information that you'd expect would be useful. Um, probably what we'll collect in the field will be longitude and latitude as GPS coordinates, and uh, I've converted those to eastings and northings. I actually probably prefer that we collect eastings and northings, those are the UTM coordinates, Universal Transverse Mercator coordinates, it's a type of coordinate system that a GPS can output, if you like. Um, I've got another another factor here, um, I'm going to put those in order, and I've got that in there mainly because I have already played around with the data, so I kind of know stuff that's in there. Now I'm going to leave some of those other things, uh, because uh, we can also change them from character columns to factor columns within 
are, we can do all sorts of data conversions, and all the rest of them are coming up as numbers when they should be. Right. And here is the code, the commands, if you like, that R is using to read that data in to produce an R data object. And this is not a bad opportunity to talk about some of the syntax in R. So first of all, here's the first command on the first line, library read R. So read R is a package of commands, so an R package, and we'll be using lots of those, uh, contains some functions that we can use. So base R has got a lot of functions in it um, without having to rely on any special packages, uh, particularly for statistical and numerical analysis. It can do a bunch of things, but it can't do everything. Uh, and so we need special packages in order to perform certain functions. So here's one called read R. And it's saying uh, create a data object called Smith's Vuyard data. So this is our field site and these data are from last year. Um, we may actually want to give that a name that's easy to type because odds on we're going to end up typing it in a few times. So I'm going to call it something else and we can just edit that code. I'm going to put SV 2017, right? Now, typing not necessarily such a big issue in, in our studios will show you because uh, there is uh, a text prediction function within our studio as well. Anyway, so there's another function here, read CSV. So we had a CSV file, here's a function to read one in and create an R data object. So read CSV, this file here in the double quotes, um, and we've said make some factors, uh, some columns factors, not just plain old text. And then the last, so those are all, this is not very easy to see because of the size of the text, deliberately large, so you can see it on the video. Um, but th all of this that I've highlighted there is one function. So it, it's a function name with some parameters in it. The first one is the name of the file. We could prefix that with file equals, but because that's what R expects first, we don't have to put that. And then there are some other parameters within that function as well, saying column types is that column is a factor with such and such levels. Calcium low high has levels low calcium and high calcium. Not exactly rocket science. And the other factor type is a factor column with those levels in it, or categories. Levels is another word for categories. Uh, and of course there's a whole lot of parentheses to it in case all those parameters in. Um, fortunately our studio has done all those for us so we don't have to keep track of it. So that's one, the next function that we run, and the next function that we run is just to view the data to make sure that we've got what we think we do. But there's one other thing I'll point out. So we've scrolled along to have a look at some of the data. And you'll notice this little code here, uppercase NA, no dots, no nothing in between. That means the data for that element and for that sample are missing. Maybe it was that, that particular element's thorium, right? So it's not very common in the Earth's crust. It might have been below detection for the instrument that we were using uh, in that particular sample. Now if we have a look at some of the other data, there will be other it doesn't make a liar of me. Okay, there's a fairly common element, so uh, there's some more NAs there where, okay, it's not that hard to measure pH or EC, um, but sometimes people forget or the sample gets lost or we spill something, so R has a, a way of dealing with missing data. And one other thing that we ought to note is if we use any weird and wonderful characters in our names, uh, and I had the micro symbol there in my text file, um, didn't come out all that well in the R um, input uh, and therefore our, our data object will have a strange column name which we probably ought to change later on. Okay. Um, these are all technicalities. So given that we're happy with anything um, and I usually just leave all of the uh, the settings, if you like, alone, except maybe for the um, the name 
so before remember it had this name I changed it in the script so you can also change it here all right and then I click import and I'm hoping that everything should happen so there we go the console window runs that script and reports it back on the screen and we get our data okay so important to look at data structure here we've got our first row became our column headings and if in R the first row is actually our first sample in the data set and because we've actually opened and created now an object within R you can see it in our environment called SV2017 and that's SV is just short for Smiths Lake and Vuryard Reserves in North Perth um, which is our field site I said that already um, okay so we, we've created that object and we've got it viewed here and we can scroll right down to show you that we've got the full 95 rows in there uh, and yes I was correct about the case um, sensitivity of street dust it was a lowercase d on dust which I'm quite happy about otherwise I would have to go back and do it again all right um, but okay we, we don't um, for example put all the soil samples in one column and all the sediment samples in another column we just identify them by another column of data which we call a factor um, and have a code if you like soil sediment and it's not very coded but um, that's what it is um, in in there and that will be sufficient for various functions to identify each sample by its sample type uh, and whether it has high or low calcium remember that we made that a factor as well um, and so on okay so we don't really need to keep that open um, we can always open it again by clicking on the little spreadsheet symbol in our environment like that and eventually it loads uh, and so I will close that all right so we've got some data in what do we do with it well probably the best thing to do now is uh, to learn a few R commands, very basic ones, and the first ones that we use from the console. And because we're just learning at the moment, we won't go into anything complicated. We'll use a function to start up a package called R Commander that will give us a point and click interface. So we won't need to remember any code for a while. Okay, but more on that later. So the each package is basically a library of different functions that we can use in R for statistical testing or manipulating data or whatever. And so the function name is just library and we need some, so you've got some text prediction here. Um, if we click on this one, you see that every function has to have some parameters inside the brackets and the parameter that we need here is the name of the library that we need. But of course RStudio Smart, if we type in some text it will give us the potential packages that, that run with that. So the one that we want is called just R Commander, which is shortened to RCMDR and that goes along with a whole lot of helper packages which will load automatically uh, some of them at least when we load our commander so we click that and the way that we run that command is just hit the enter key so it's loading a whole bunch of helper packages that it needs to do its stuff and ultimately we'll open then another window which we can do a lot of our analysis of data and creating graphs and so forth with. Okay, now what it's done is open it on my other screen. So I'm going to bring it down and put it right over the console. So we're not going to actually need to use that anymore and this is not a bad way of, of using things. The idea will do that. It's that Windows resizing thing on a split screen. So don't drag it too close to the bottom. It's going to do it again. It's kind of me off now. Okay, that'll do. Okay, so we've got our commander nicely nestled in there. Um, and let's, it, again, it's a multi pane window. It'll run some script 
which we access through the, the menu at the top um, in the top window and will give us whatever output uh, that we have as it, if it's text based output in the the bottom pane of the window right um, and it'll, if we make a mistake it will bleep at us and give us nasty messages down here or, or maybe sometimes helpful messages as well um, what it's telling us is that we don't have an active data set so by default our commander won't load anything we have to tell it to um, and so we click on that we get a little window like this popping up pick one well we only have one because we only made one we click that and click OK right okay so it uh, loaded that that data set um, and then it detected some problem with the column names in fact our EC name and uh, it, it didn't like that and gave us a message that it's changed that to something else and it, it beeped although you probably didn't hear that came through my speakers and um, there we have it all right so what we can do with our commander then is to uh, manipulate our data so our active data set we can do a bunch of things in there uh, and what we probably want to do is to um, rename a variable so we can get some information about the active data set or we can manage variables so what I'm going to do is rename one of our variables and that pops up a window which is this one here so that's given me a whole lot of weird stuff um, it's not as weird if you're geeky like me you know that 00B5 is actually the Unicode code for the micro symbol um, which is why it has come up and looked a bit weird but I'm going to pick one variable EC blah and um, rename that in fact that's the log transform version of it so we want to change that to something like EC dot log to make it much easier to type and understand what on earth is going on. Alright, and we can check that. So if we go to data again in the top menu, active data set, we can check actually what variables we have in there. So we click on variables in active data set and we get some output straight away. So there's a list of the variables um, all kind of crammed in there. So we see the column headings basically when we run that command. And there's, if you want to know the script, it's just names. We actually use the variation of that to rename a column. All right, and we can go through some of that. So names in in brackets, we've got the data set name, and in these square brackets, we can specify a particular column. It was actually column number 52. Um, and this little backwards arrow symbol means put the results of this function into that. C, with in, in, in brackets, is a, just a vector. It can be text or numbers inside the vector. So we've got a, a one element vector, if you like, or a chunk of data with just one entry. EC.log is the name. Uh, recognizes it as text because it's in double quotes. Single quotes or double quotes work equally well. Uh, and it's put it into that location in that data set. And that's basically what we did by renaming the column. All right. And if we go down to check, we find column number 52 in our names. Here it is, ec.log. That's what we renamed it to instead of that that um, weird text that we had before. And there's the untransformed data in column 13. All right. 